but I actually need two functionaires. The word of the day is mana, which means a unexpected relief. So for a word in which we could use that would be when the God sends the mana down to the Israelites, it was a form of mana. Yeah. Trying to get that yeah, clear out. Yeah, it's a little, yeah, redo it. But I do need a odd counter, so who would like to volunteer to be my odd counter today? Thank you. Can I stay here? No. Oh, you can scoot yeah. <laughs> Yes. And I need one timer. I think Mark I'm Mark Ray. Okay. Excellent. Well, as that is going around, the theme for today is the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario. You can take this in whichever ways you like. It could also be related to the election. I personally also like to be thinking of, depending on your personal views, for one way or another, it was going to be the worst case scenario for you. And now we have that. But I also like to think of it in the sense of Castaway with poor Wilson, who floated off into the ocean. Or any other scenarios that we may come up with in life. Which leads into... Our technical table. <laughs> First and foremost, please help me welcome the grammarian, Ms. Tara. In addition, oh, here's the word of the day, mana. Any sudden or unexpected help, advantage, or aid to success. Do you want me to read it again? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when God sent the mana to the Israelites, it was a great source of mana. In addition, I will be listening for any errors in grammar as well as excellent word selections. I will also be noting any colorful thoughts or phrases members might use. During the evaluation portion of the meeting, I will present my report. And Thank you, excellent. Pay a fine for forgetting to uh, do the Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Next up, we have our timer, Ms. Macarena Torres. Okay. Woo! My question is to time the speaker as evaluation portion of the tabletopic participants to ensure they meet the timing requirements. Speakers, green is five minutes, yellow six, red is seven. Table topics, green is 30 seconds, yellow 45 seconds, and red is one minute. For evaluators, 
Green is two minutes, yellow two and a half minutes, and red is three minutes. I will demonstrate the timing lights, <coughs> which are right here. I will report the timing results at the end of the meeting. Thank you. Next up, we have our odd counter, Miss Stephanie. So that was one of the times in which we were preparing for the worst case scenario, but we lucked out a little bit. For our first speaker, they will be working out of the Competent Communicator, Communicator's Manual, project number three. Suicide is something that is not talked about or even mentioned. It is usually kept quiet or swept under the rug. People are almost scared of the word suicide. And it's, it, or, and it's applications. And for her third speech, Carmen will break the silence. Please help me welcome Ms. Carmen Lopez. Hey, fellow Toastmasters and guests, today I will break the silence on suicide. I will speak on this unspeakable topic. I will become a voice to the countless Americans currently fighting their own emotions feelings and thoughts. Americans that are slowly losing this battle and thinking about ending it all and making plans in the middle. They're also writing farewell letters to their family and friends asking for forgiveness for what they're about to do. Suicide is the tenth leading cause of death in the United States of America, taking the lives of 42,773 people every year. That's 117 people a day. That's one person lost to suicide every three hours. More men than women die from suicide. Why? Men use more deadly and successful methods of suicide. The method of choice to commit suicide? Firearms. 50% of suicides are committed using firearms, followed by suffocation or strangling at 26%. 16% of people use poisoning or overdosing on any kind of medication. 7.5% of people use more creative methods, such as jumping off bridges, jumping off tall buildings, slitting their own wrists, or having whatever creative way you can come up to kill yourself. Suicide most often occurs when stressors exceed a person's coping abilities. Suicide is most commonly associated with depression. Undiagnosed and untreated depression is the main cause of most suicides. Other mental health conditions that can predispose a patient a person to committing suicide include schizophrenia, bipolar, psychosis, and borderline personality. Other medical chronic conditions can also lead a person to seek suicide as a form of escape. A patient that's been dealing with diabetes since they were three years old and no longer wants to deal with the injections and the insulin. Or a person dealing with chronic pain just wants to stop it. The medication is not working. Death will. Other risk factors that can maybe predispose a person to think about suicide are environmental factors, stressful life events, the death of a loved one, a significant other, divorce, and even loss of a job. And again, if a person has all these factors and they have access to firearms, they're more likely to commit suicide. 
Other factors included family history of suicide attempts. If a person grew up with mom over here constantly trying to kill herself, or Uncle Joe over here committed suicide, or even if the closest best friend just committed suicide. They see suicide now as an appropriate and okay form to cope with all of life's stress. Now you may be wondering, how do we know if our loved one is thinking about suicide? They will tell you. They will make vague comments. I want to end it all. I feel like a burden. I just want to stop the pain. They may also begin to do certain things. They may start giving away their prized possessions. That antique ceramic bowl from great grandma. They don't want it anymore. They may even start visiting people they haven't visited. Calling, texting, and emailing, saying, you've been a great friend. You've been a great support to me. I really loved having you in my life. Past tense. A few days later, they're gone. These are all warning signs. They're not always overt. They're not always, hey, I want to kill myself tomorrow. It's not always that upfront. A person who commits suicide tells you. You just have to look for it. Now, the greatest factor that I believe that increases the chance is if the person has done it in the past. A person who commits suicide is very, very likely to try it again. So we need to build these people up. Now, what do you do if you think a friend is thinking about suicide? You need to reach out to them. If they say, you know what? Life is getting to be too difficult. Talk to them. Say, like, why do you think this? How can I help? How can I be there for you? Let them know that you care. A lot of times, they just want someone to listen and believe them. Now, I'm going to give you two phone numbers here. They're national crisis hotlines. If you believe a loved one is committing suicide, they will help you on how to talk to them on where to point them to, on which resources to guide them to. Or if you yourself ever find yourself in an overwhelming situation, you can call the number yourself and they will help you. They will point you to support groups. The first one is the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Their phone number is 1-800-273-8255. The next one, a little easier to remember. It is the National Hope Line Network. It's 1-800-SUICIDE. Now both these, they're anonymous. They don't take names, they don't take phone numbers, but they will tell you, hey, go to the hospital. Go to this mental health facility. They will help you. They will help you get medications. They will give you therapy. Thank you. Let's put two minutes on the clock for that one. What? <laughs> okay, one minute on the clock. Thank you. Have you ever wondered what you would do if you happened to be shipwrecked or your car broke down on the side of the road but you had to stay there for a while? One of my favorite shows, it was called Survivor Man by Les Stroud. <coughs> and what he did is he actually put himself, yes, it's an amazing show, he put himself in the worst <coughs> case scenarios. One time he went to Russia in winter, which if you're not Russian, you just don't do that. <laughs> and Part of the contract, in order for the Russians to let him do this, is he had to bring a snow dog team, or a sled. This way, he would actually have transportation to be able to go back and forth. Well, when he does this, he has a camera crew that's kind of out to the side, 
but he's filming himself, so they're kind of there if he really gets into trouble. But while he was doing it, he said, sometimes you gotta lose your dog's leg. So what's he do? He just hops it off and lets him run. And then he continues filming the show from there. Granted, he has his crew, which will come and pick him up after seven days, but he still has to figure it out for seven days. So seeing that was always one of my favorite shows because it brought a different perspective. It wasn't someone falling around with the camera. You got the realism of what it was like to be alone in the wilderness for X amount of days and to have to figure out how to survive off the land in different climates. For our next speech, today's Toastmaster, Gus Davis, is presenting from the Advanced Communication Series Interpreventative Reading Manual Project number three, Deliver a Monodrama. Assume the identity of a character. Portray the physical and emotional aspects of the character to the audience. The purpose, pain, and pleasure. Why does God allow bad things to happen to good people? The character of the drama is Mr. Job, not Mr. Work. The story of biblical character with the book by his name in the scriptures. The narrative is set in Oz, located in northern Arabia. Job tells his life story about God, his family, friends, and wealth. Please help me welcome Mr. Gus Davis. Why does bad thing happen to good people? Why do we live in a world where there is evil that people have sickness, pain, and suffering? What happens to you when you're going through a very, very difficult time? Your family, your friends, and they forsake you. What do you do at those times? Every one of us in this room, we have a reason why we're alive. We have a purpose. But as we go through life, things happen that cause us pain, misery, devastation. But as we roll a coast through that, we come to a place where we realize also there's a pleasure after you've gone through the pain and you can look back, you've had a purpose to live by. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, I am Job. Let me tell you my purpose in life, my pain, and my pleasure. I, Job, I live in the land of Oz. I was a very wealthy man. I had a huge ranch. I had oxen. I had cattle. And I had many, many servants. They all worked for me. But also, I was a very righteous, religious blameless man, a man of integrity. <clears throat> that was my reason for living. As a family, I had a great family. I had a wife and three beautiful daughters and seven sons. That was me, Mr. Job. I was respected in my community. People looked up to me to see that I was a community leader. Then one day, Something happened in the heavens. The accuser, the evil one, and the creator decided to release pain and suffering on me. How did they do that? The accuser said to the holy righteous one, Job is only a good man because you've given him all of these things. Take away those things from him and see if Job will, see, will still be the righteous man. Yes, it happened. One day, I was sitting in my mansion, and one of my servants came up to me and said, Job, we were in the fields. We got attacked. All your cattle, all your oxen are all taken away. You've lost everything. Misery has started on Job. Another day, one of my servants came up and said, Job, there was a storm in the city, and the house fell down. All your ten children are dead. The three daughters and sons, they are dead. And now, my pain started. 
I started to mourn the misery, the devastation in my life. I, Job, what will I do? Where will I go? I've lost everything. And then the accuser went back to the Holy One and said, Job, he is still a righteous man. But you know, he lost everything. And then the accuser said, skin for skin, you touch the man Job and see if he still be righteous. And then I, Job, all over my body, from my head to my toe, was covered with boils. I was in pain, hurt, suffering. A man of purpose have lost it. I'm now in pain. My wife, with whom we've lost our ten children, said to me, Do you still hold on to your integrity? And in my anger and desperation, I said to my wife, you foolish woman, should we only expect good and not evil? Three of my friends came to me. Elab, Zophar, and Elpers. They sat with me in silence for seven days. Silence and solitude. Then they started to speak and said, Job, you are not an innocent man. You must have done something wrong for you to go through this pain and suffering. And other one of my friends said to me, Job, no one is innocent. Everyone has done wrong. Job, you have questions. Where is this God that you follow? Look at the suffering you're going through. And I stayed in my emotional depression. I may have a, a attempted suicide. Because there was no longer any manna from heaven for me, Job. This was my worst case scenario, Mr. Job. As I sat down there with all my friends, with all the questions, with all the doubts, what will I do? These three friends left and a younger man came up. He has waited. He listened to what all others were saying to me. He said, Job, have you ever considered to tell God about your pain and suffering. The Holy One who released the accuser to put you in pain. And I, Job, I started to consider. And God had questions for me and said, <clears throat> Job, were you there when I made the heavens? When I put the moon and the stars in place? Did I consult with you? Job, were you there when I made all the land and all the beautiful things? Then and only then, I, Job, started to consider. My friends were not truthful. I cannot have a purpose and don't have suffering in my life. Then I repented of all that I had done. My life got changed, I, Job. I came to the place where the pleasure, the delight I had returned to me, Job. I had more delight because you know what? All of the wealth were regained. My wealth was restored, and my wife and I had other three daughters and seven sons. In my pain, I saw the pleasure of not asking questions. There may never be an answer. But my purpose was to always be a righteous, a blameless man. I, Job, this is my story. Mr.
Thank you. All right, everyone go ahead and stand up for me. Go ahead and stand up. Go ahead and stand up. Go ahead. Stretch. Stretch. Through every worst situation, there's always a moment of manna. There's a moment in which we realize maybe this isn't as bad as it seems. Maybe this isn't quite as bad as it could have been. Because when you go through those things, it creates a stronger individual. And it creates someone that you possibly could have never been before. Such as our table topics. <laughs> Please help me welcome to the lecture, Miss Stacy. Master, fellow members and guests, what is a situation I had to talk my way? Can we make it this situation <laughs> that I talk my way out of? Because I'm sure that people want to keep their breakfast down with my stories of trying to talk my way out of certain situations. I think um, the one I'll use is. We got the green card. Can I get out of this? No. 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 Come on, Rich. All right. Okay, I got one. You ready? It's gonna go. You're gonna have to put that away. I, I, well, I created a coup at my old job at Lifestyle Family Fitness. I had everybody band together against the boss. We, in a meeting like this, I said, "Hey, we're gonna air our grievances today, but not, none of the opinions today you're going is not necessarily my opinions. I'm just being the coordinator. Of course, I was still blamed for the situation, and after getting a tongue lashing from my boss." And getting threatened to fire to get written up, I stood up and I go, Can I get a hug? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, What? He goes, Can I get a hug? I want I, I feel there's tension between us. <laughs> and I want to make sure that when I leave the room that we're gonna be okay. Come on. Now I want you to picture this guy's about 6'3, 250 pounds, and he gets up and he leans down and gives me a bear hug. And that's the way I got out of losing my job. <laughs> Okay, so the next table topic is for Bob. Oh, ooh, yeah. Okay, so since we are close to the holidays, has there ever been a family event you have wanted to get out of and why? <laughs> Republicans and some are Democrats. <laughs> and everybody tried to stay away from the railing. <laughs> so the best we did was my 97-year-old mother, who led the cruise, 
decided that nobody was to speak about politics until she said, what the hell is with Donald Trump? <laughs> and that's the end of the cruise. So, <laughs> so now I'm afraid to see my mother because we have no idea what she's going to say to anybody, but we're trying to keep the family together. <laughs>
So we had many different challenges today uh, during the meeting, but right now we will get our evaluators out here who evaluate the speakers. Speaker number, evaluator number one, speaking, uh, evaluating Carmen Lopez is Mike Hughes. Uh -oh. Mike some sort of suicide in whether it be family, uncles, whatever. When you kick this thing off, you had such a strong intro instantly. I think you had everyone's attention. You didn't waste any time. I thought that was an excellent job that you did. Stats, one in every three. When you start breaking stats down, it hits home, doesn't it? If all you think about one in every three hours, that's a lot of people. Relatable, close to home, yeah. Everyone here, I think, has experienced that in some capacity or heard of somebody or knew of somebody where that may have happened. You got right to the point. The general purpose of the speech, general purpose of the speech was clear. Specific purpose, clear, absolutely. You made it exactly. You hit the points that I think needed to be hit for this kind of a speech. No fluff, all business. Organized, absolutely. Main points, support in it. Yet good uh, signs and symptoms. Excellent advice. What things to look for in somebody else that most people miss. They're like, oh, they're just being funny or they're being crazy. No, they're, they're legit asking for help. And that's a great thing to point out to people. The other thing I really liked is you gave hotlines. Numbers that people can call a way out if they need it. The beginning, body, conclusion. Beginning, love it, body, strong, conclusion. I felt I wanted a little bit more punch some kind of a word to just really hit us in the gut so we could all walk away with that moment, take our breath away, make us take a mental step back. Achieve a specific purpose, I think that's clear, confident. I had a sense of man when you got up here and just spoke. Just so confident. You know your topic, you're clearly passionate about this, I think you did an excellent job conveying that to all of us. But with everything, we have suggestions, don't we? My one suggestion, crossing your legs. It takes away from your confidence. Stand here, move the podium out of the way. You know this material. Mm -hmm. I know you didn't know the phone numbers off the top of your head, but that's fine. You can refer to the notes on that. That's one of the things on here is referring to notes. Get out here and talk to us because you have a very clear message. You work in this field, yes? So you know it very well. And you can address each one of these people because you've seen it firsthand. How these people, what they go through, what they experience, and then you diagnose and treat accordingly, correct? Share that with us. Let us know that you are in charge of this room. Important topic, you're passionate about it. So in closing, I'm gonna say excellent job. You hit the nail right on the head, and I'm damn proud of you for bringing up that topic because it takes some real heart to address that speed. Mr. Time of one minute, please. No, don't need that. What? Hold on. Oh, oh, damn it, hurts me, damn it. Maybe one minute. Now we have number three. We don't have a number two. Marty Sunny. This is how you dress when you evaluate. This is how you don't dress when you evaluate. <laughs> Out of the interpretive reading, which I had not come across, Gus Davies, who is always one of the most engaging, and I've said it before, graceful speakers that I've come across. This is quite different from any other speech that has been assigned or I've seen. In fact, he had to become that character of Joe. What I thought you did extremely well was to set up the scenario of what was going on in the story and then had a beautiful transition into becoming Joe, where you had a change in your 
tone of voice, and your body language. You also very clearly set up Job's scenario, what was happening, what was happening in his little empire with his servants. This is where it's very different from other speeches. In this monodrama, did the speaker successfully avoid eye contact with the audience? In fact, he was supposed to get within himself and within those characters. And you did about 50% on that. I saw you go in and out. When you were Job, you were very powerful. When you transitioned to the other characters, you became them. In between, in those transitions, I don't know if it was natural habit, I saw you make a lot of eye contact, and that broke from the monodrama for a few moments there. What parts did you appear most comfortable? Your total command of the content and the story was magnificent, easy to follow, powerful. And your vocal intensity, you had such vocal intensity in certain parts as Job, that I wanted you to match that in your physicality. There were times where you could have been so demonstrative, again, within yourself, not making eye contact, which would have been more powerful, because it was in yourself. You're becoming that character. And I needed you to become that character and stay in that character. And those were the only times when you came out. Your presence, your vocal quality, and once again, your grace in telling the story are above reproach and are sometimes to me, as someone who is continuing to learn, manna from heaven, from the graces of a very experienced speaker. And I want to congratulate you on a very, very difficult assignment. Bit, um, over not over short of time, we still have we didn't have a third speaker, so we have more time than we actually need. So let me give you a little story. Today's yeah. word of today is manna. Yesterday, my wife and I and two other guys played the charity golf tournament in Heathrow, and we did very well, not because of me or my wife, because of the two other guys. They were <laughs> excellent players. So we were, I don't know, a 10 under uh, as we approached. Par, I'd say not, it was 10, a par 3. So I hit, the other two guys hit, and our ball, some went on the green, but far away, so it would have been a par. A par three. My wife is, let's say, a below average player. <laughs> what that means is, occasionally, she hits the ball. <laughs> not very often, or it goes this way or that way. Anyways, she went to the ladies' tea, which is the red tea, which you had to go over the water in order to get to the, to the hole. And I don't know, I didn't even watch her. All of a sudden, the ball went airborne and landed two feet wow. away from the hole, <laughs> which was unbelievable, because we expected we would be at par. But because of her, she was our team's manner which is a sudden and unexpected help, advantage, or aid to success. I cannot give you a better example than that. So, and I, of course, put it in. We were one below and we came in third uh, in, in the tournament, which is great. So I told my guy yesterday, we did like 59, which is really good. Again, not because of me. <laughs> So I called my guy who's a golfer, we play golf in the weekend. I said, you know, I've never had my name attached to number 59 in any tournament. Well, he said, maybe on the first nine you did. <laughs> first nine, mean, <maybe. laughs> and it was 118, which is really bad. But anyways, that, that's a good example. Manner. Nobody knows. <laughs> so now we have plenty of time. 
for our technical table, starting with the R counter. Stephanie. Stephanie, I'm sorry. Oh, you're the R counter. Okay. I was kind of wondering. I didn't see your R counter. Right. Yeah, yeah, we didn't see it. It's because you're sitting on the spot. <laughs> Speakers clean. Mike Hughes, one so. Ernst, one arm, one so. And the winner of the day is Marty. Six berries. Bail, y'all. The next one is Macarena Torres, our timer. five to seven minutes. Carmen, you did well, 5.39. Gus, you went a little bit over by eight seconds. You did seven minutes, eight seconds. It's not bad. Good. Table topics. Carrie, 36 seconds. Rich, a minute, 36 seconds. Bob, 40, 41 seconds. James, 42 seconds. Stephen, a minute, 18 seconds. Our evaluators, Mike, Two minutes, 47 seconds, and Marty, three minutes, 23 seconds. And that is my report. Thank you very much. Next day is our grammarian report. Thank you, fellow Toastmasters. Here's my report. Sam, I thought you used a lot of descriptive, colorful phrases after the storm, becoming a person. Carmen, um, lots of excellent word selections, predisposed, overt. Uh, both speakers, though, I noticed you used very a little bit more than you probably could have. Gus, you used a lot of really evocative words that were, I thought, even more powerful because you used them in groups. You said pain, misery, devastation, righteous, religious, blameless. <laughs> you used a lot of <laughs> you used a lot of alliteration. You said suffering and solitude, or sat with me in silence for seven days. <laughs> Great use of grammar there. Bob, um, you tried, you had a great metaphor uh, that you used for avoiding politics on the ship. You said we tried to stay away from the railing. <laughs> uh, let's see, Rich, lots of colorful words, as is to be expected. You <laughs> two band together, air our grievances, tongue lashing, bear hug. Mike, you used lots of action words, I noticed. You uh, kicked off, more punch, hit us in the gut, take a step back, hit the points, hit the nail on the head. And Marty, <laughs> Marty used lots of colorful phrases and words. You said total command of content, magnificent, physicality, demonstrative. And I noticed Sam used the word of the day four times, Gus once, Ernst three times, Mike once, and Marty once. That's my report. As for the general meeting, the room was set up on time, even though we had a little glitch starting out. Uh, Sergeant Baum started the meeting on time. The air is fantastic here. It's not too cold, not too hot. <laughs> Lighting is perfect. We went through the meeting fast. Our Toastmaster did a great job. The only thing I would recommend next time is get up a little earlier to come to the meeting and Print, to to print the agenda the day before so you don't have any of these problems. Anyways, it was a great meeting, and I'm asking for now for our president to come over and finish up the meeting. Uh, Woo! Yes. Thank you. 
Oh. Yeah. How much? Nobody buy it? Yeah. Yeah. I've got an empty box. You got an empty box? So that means I'm guaranteed to win something, right? Yeah. Ten <laughs> bucks in the box. Yeah, that was a very, very good and awesome banquet. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> great. No, great and awesome. It was a great and awesome. <laughs> very, great, very awesome day. Thank you so much for everything. 50 50. Devin is in charge of that right now. So work on it. If you like it, it's uh, one dollar for one ticket, two dollars for three tickets, eight tickets um, for five dollars, and you can have the club. Okay. Gary, do you want to? Oh. Yes. Three tickets. This what I passed out is the Stories of Christmas. It's the CFCR, the Central Florida Community Arts Choir and Orchestra performance. It's on December 8th and 9th, and I put it out now because we've already sold over a third of the tickets. So, and it typically does sell out. So, if anybody wants to go, the website is on the paper if you want to go and get tickets. Yeah, I, I got to thank Toastmasters because, uh, as you know, I spoke last week oh, yes. and it, it went extremely well. I talked to 160 sales experts. To give you an idea of the quality of their expertise, three of them, while we were there, each got a bonus for last quarter of excess of $1 million wow. each. <coughs> so I got to talk. I did Toastmasters. I did good eye contact. I talked about sales expertise and what they could learn by using some of the older techniques mixed with new ones, and it went over extremely well. I got great response, and a lot of people later on came back and asked me for uh, something written about what they could do to increase their sales experiences. So thank you, Toastmasters. And that was only from the first class. Yeah. <laughs> thank you.
So this was the book, you can look at it, great pictures. Check out our ad. Right, yeah, we have an ad in, in the page there. Stephen did an amazing job. About 300 people were present. And lastly, we have two events coming up. The next spring conference, May 19 and 20. I know you're thinking about June, but well, May is before June. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so you can start planning now. We should come for half of the day. Please plan on that and you can be inspired by everybody around you. And then we'll be talking about our TLI, and that's January the 7th. No, January 26th. Oh, January 26th. Correct, correct. January 26th. But great thing to be planning on the conference is something that will really charge you up. I know what Toastmasters is great. Thanks. I have a comment, a suggestion, yeah. grammarian. People in the role of grammarian, please give your word to the Toastmaster so it can affix it to the agenda. And please bring in three, four sheets, please. Big, so we can see it. Posting it there, 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 and there. North, east, south, and west, okay? Please. That's part of the responsibility of the grammarian. And also, trap in colorful phrases, phrases is fine, and the word of the day, grammatical error, errors. You, there, there, were, there were some. The speeches, everything was superb. It was really wonderful today. But there were some grammatical errors that we need to be aware of so that we can improve. OK. Thank you. All right. Uh, awesome, what? Awesome, awesome week. Very, 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 very awesome week. <laughs> 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 